First at five, there is a good chance you may not be feeling your best today. And it's not just because it was a back to work and back to school Monday. Yeah, these numbers here mean misery for a lot of us. Instead, mountain cedar is to blame. It's making a lot of people miserable these days. Here's a look at why. A KSAT viewer shared this video with us from Canyon Lake. You can see just how much pollen is rising off those trees and filling the air. Uh, as Katrina Weber reports, all the sneezing and eye irritation that goes with it may be sticking around for a while. From the hill country to the inner city, trouble is in the air. Pollen from the ash juniper, or as we call it, mountain cedar, has people all over town reaching for the tissues. The typical runny nose, sneezing, congested, along with itchy, irritated eyes. Dr. Ted Freeman says patients have been reaching out to him in droves at the San Antonio Asthma and Allergy Clinic ever since mountain cedar levels began reaching for the sky. Today's measurement was in the very high category at more than 28,000 pollen grains per cubic feet of air. In other words, it's miserable for people who are allergic and there's no way around it. Unless you want to leave the San Antonio area from January through February or March, it's really going to be hard to avoid mountain cedar. Freeman says cool, clear weather like we've been having is what really gets mountain cedar all stirred up. And when the winds pick up, that's when trouble really blows in. If we had uh, rain, it would knock it all out of the air and you'd feel better. For at least the next few days, though, he says the misery known as cedar fever will persist. He says over-the-counter antihistamines can help some. Steroid nasal sprays can be even better. Those can work very well on all the symptoms, including congestion, but it takes about a week, maybe as much as a week, to start working. Unless you planned ahead, you may need to stock up on the tissues while nature runs its course. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And with that very high mountain cedar count today, you may have noticed a little extra dust on your windshield. Well, that's the uh, cedar pollen. It's uh, similar to what we see every springtime when oak gets very high. But you know, clean off your windshield and you see that little bit of grime on there. Yep, it's high right now. And actually, I want to show you a graph. This is our peak season for mountain cedar. Usually it peaks in mid-January and we're about right here on this graph. So yes, there still is more time for a peak mountain cedar. Unfortunately, today the count up over 28,000. Very high category. And guess what? We have a wind shift coming. Not a beneficial wind shift when it comes to reducing cedar. The winds out of the northwest in the hill country. This is part of a cold front that's moving our way. It's going to give us a northwesterly breeze pumping in. Well, just reinforcing the mountain cedar count. More on our forecast in that cold front coming up. Thanks. Adam, we'll see you in a few minutes. We'll new at five. A former Kendall County Sheriff's deputy involved in a wrong way crash that left one woman critically injured last month is now facing an upgraded charge. Charles Mott has been charged with aggravated assault, causing serious bodily injury. He was originally charged with intoxication assault. The 67 year old accused of critically injuring a 43 year old woman back on December 27th in a head on crash. Mott's worked with the Kendall County Sheriff's Office for seven years between 2001 and 2011. He's currently out on bond. A San Antonio Municipal Court employee who allegedly slapped a security guard at a downtown nightclub last month now facing an assault charge. On December 28th, police say that Jennifer Ruiz was asked to leave the DJ booth at Pegasus nightclub near closing time. When the security guard grabbed her arm to get her down from that booth, she allegedly called him a rent-a-pig and slapped him. Ruiz claims she threw her arm back as a natural reaction to being pulled. Ruiz is a senior clerk with the municipal court. She currently remains on duty. A visitation service underway for fallen San Antonio ISD officer Cliff Martinez. Martinez died last month after he was assaulted and run over by two men outside of an IHOP restaurant. The visitation at Porter Loring Mortuary on McCullough. It ends at 9 o'clock tonight. Funeral services set for tomorrow morning at Community Bible Church. That's off North Loop 1604 East. You can find more information on KSAT.com. Less than two months after the Market Plots building at the Worst Fest grounds in New Braunfels was destroyed, the cleanup begins. Crews out this morning shoveling all that was left of the building as we know it. That building went up in flames on November 15th, just days after the 59th annual Worst Fest wrapped up. 
The cause of the fire remains under investigation, but with nearly a full year to rebuild, people are hopeful this space will be back up and running in time for next year's celebration. Not the first time that happened, I think was uh, after the uh, 86 flood, they had, uh, they had, I think, 13 weeks to rebuild it. And they got going. Better than ever. Back by the, they'll get going and be back better than ever. And I can hardly wait. The 60th Annual Worst Fest will commemorate the 175th anniversary of the founding of New Braunfels. It kicks off November 6th. Attention SAWS customers, San Antonio Water Systems 9.9% rate increase is now in effect. It started actually back on January 1st. Yeah, SAW says customers will see an increase of about $6.50 more per month on average. Last year rates increased by about 4.7%, also 6% back in 2018. New rates will appear on February bills. President Trump is back in Washington facing threats from congressional leaders, Iran and Iraq, as tensions escalate in the Middle East. As ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi reports, Democrats are looking to limit the president's unilateral military options regarding Iran. But the president isn't backing down on his threats of retaliation if Iran strikes. Iran entering another day of mourning over the loss of its top military commander, Qasem Soleimani. The country's supreme leader shedding tears over Soleimani's coffin during his funeral Monday, surrounded by a sea of mourners paying tribute to a man revered by many, but also with the blood of hundreds of American troops on his hands. Washington watching closely, bracing for Iran's next move. Soleimani's replacement vowing for revenge, while in Iraq, members of the parliament at the request of the prime minister took a non-binding vote to expel all American troops. Aboard Air Force One, President Trump warning Iraq, a U.S. ally, that if it follows through on removing U.S. troops, quote, we will charge them sanctions like they've never seen before ever. Regarding Iran this morning, the president tweeted in all caps, quote, Iran will never have a nuclear weapon. Following its announcement, it will no longer abide by any operational constraints under the 2015 nuclear deal. NATO Secretary General calling for restraint and de-escalation in the region. A new conflict would be in no one's interest. So Iran must refrain from further violence and provocations. In a letter to her colleagues Sunday, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi called the airstrike, quote, provocative and disproportionate. Announcing the House will vote on a war powers resolution to limit the president's military actions. And in the Senate, Minority Leader Chuck Schumer called the president's foreign policy erratic and unsuccessful. We do not need this president either bumbling or impulsively getting us into a major war. And on Wednesday, there will be an all-Senate meeting to discuss the Soleimani strike and the rising tensions with Iran. Monaco Saramdi, ABC News, Washington. It is a marathon. The road to the White House is long. Some candidates have spent more than a year on the trail, collecting millions of dollars in donations and funneled mega money toward campaign ads. But according to new polling, the state of Iowa, the crucial first caucus state, still very much up for grabs. Nadia Romero is live from Washington to explain. Nadia. Well, Steve, just a month ago, Mayor Pete Buttigieg was the clear front runner in Iowa, but a new poll shows it's a three man tie between Buttigieg, Biden and Sanders. Right now, Elizabeth Warren is trying to gain some momentum, and she's doing so by picking up a big endorsement from a former Democratic challenger. Joe Biden and Michael Bloomberg are also picking up big name support as well. Despite tours across the countryside and countless campaign stops, there's no clear front runner in Iowa. What I'm doing is working my heart out as our team is to make sure that we have a good result, and I think we will. According to the first qualifying poll of the new year, Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, and Pete Buttigieg hold a three-way tie at 23 percent. Elizabeth Warren and Amy Klobuchar round out the top tier. We are seeing people show up everywhere. Whoa. In a field with more than a dozen Democratic contenders, Sanders dominates the money game, pulling in nearly $100 million in 2019. The reason our campaign is the strongest campaign is because of the grassroots support that we have, which is you. 
Another key measure of a candidate's viability, endorsements. More than 30 members of Congress and governors back Biden. The most of any Democrat in the race. Warren is attempting to heat up her cooling campaign after a disappointing fundraising quarter and slumping poll numbers. The Massachusetts senator received a key endorsement from a former foe, Julian Castro. That's why I'm proud to endorse Elizabeth Warren for president. While candidates court Iowa caucus goers, Michael Bloomberg is waiting in the wings. You're just going to have to have somebody that can beat Donald Trump, and that is not going to be easy. The billionaire is skipping the first four early contests and focusing solely on Super Tuesday. Only time will tell if the unconventional strategy spells a win to the White House. All right, so you can expect to see Julian Castro out with Elizabeth Warren tomorrow in Brooklyn. And this is a big deal for Warren. Essentially, Castro is putting his stamp of approval on her as the candidate he believes that will move forward with his favorite initiatives like immigration or reparations for descendants of slaves. And for Warren, this allows her to possibly enter the homes of communities of color somewhere that she's trying to gain momentum. Live from Washington, I'm Nadia Romero. Steve, back to you. And certainly that Castro endorsement caught our attention today. Nadia Romero, thank you. We want to take you to some late breaking news on the city's north side. A fire here at an apartment complex. It has displaced people living in five units. The fire happened on Desert Sands near 281 in San Pedro. San Antonio's fire department says that it looks as though the fire started in a heating and AC system. The flames were contained, though, to just one unit. No one was in that unit at the time. The people that were displaced will be put in vacant units until they can get back into their own homes. The devastating brush fires continuing to burn in Australia. So far, they have scorched more than 12 million acres of land. At least 24 people have died. More than 2,000 homes have been destroyed. Ecologists estimate more than 480 million animals have died since the start of the bush fire season in September. Today, Australia's Prime Minister Scott Morrison announced an extra $2 billion being committed to recovery. Spurs guard Patty Mills, who is from Australia, took to Twitter to raise awareness on the devastation today. He's hoping other Australian NBA players will join him. Greg Simmons will have more on Mills' efforts tonight during our 6 o'clock newscast.